Some people like to build cars, some people like to build PCs. But whatever you want to do to modify your car or your PC, there is a term for that, ricing. Now the way I've always interpreted it is, imported cars, specifically Japanese cars, think Fast and Furious 1. A lot of those cars would be considered riced out cars. They were imported from Japan, they didn't come over with a ton of power, but with modifications and software tunes, they were able to turn them into race cars. Now along with that came a lot of flashy accessories. Now I've been working in IT about eight years now doing Linux admin stuff, and I've never been a big fan of ricing. I mean, I get why it exists. It looks cool, it's just never really something that I would wanted to get into. I mainly used a Windows machine for my main gaming PC, and then I used Linux at work. And that was pretty much it, they were kind of separate. But I did enjoy Linux, and I understand why people do enjoy Linux using it on their daily drivers. I would install it on laptops and other machines that I had around, but my gaming PC and my work PC was always a Windows PC. Now I've been daily driving Linux for about a year now. It's about a year since I made that video about switching over to Linux full time. Now the first distro that I installed on my main PC was Nobara OS with the KDE Plasma front end. I changed to a different distro called Pop OS with a front end called GNOME. And that front end is very basic. It's not really meant for a lot of customization, which is why I picked it. It does exactly what I need it to do. It's, it's close to stock Ubuntu, which I also enjoy. It was kind of the perfect OS for me for work and play. And then I saw that PewDiePie video. You know the PewDiePie video. PewDiePie's making us all look bad. I think we all had that same reaction. People that were in my comments like, whoa, I need to step my game up. And I said the same thing in that video. So I've got my stage one rice going. The reason I call it stage one, because I didn't do anything crazy. I just wrote a couple of scripts. Like I said, I am using this front end called GNOME, which is not really made for customization, but you can add some things to it to you know spice it up a little bit. Let me show you how it all works. So first is not actually anything that I made, but someone else made in the open source community. And that's YouTube Music Desktop App. There's a big customization community for this software. So you can see I did a little bit of customization. This green text is not stock. You know, we're starting off light. We're not, we're not gonna get too deep into the weeds first. I wanna get like a nice baseline. So along with the music player, the visualizer, let me show you my terminal. I'll just show you my terminal. So I kind of wanted to go with like a Star Wars theme. So let me show you my vision here. This, this will kind of give you a little peek into my vision. I want to make my Linux distro look like the cockpit of an X-Wing. So when I open my terminal, I get a little like welcome screen for like logging into your X-Wing. One thing I want to change, I want to show you what that looks like. So. This isn't done with a script or anything. It's done in the actual like bash config. And I want to change something because this has memory. It's just a snapshot of how much RAM is being used at that time, which is not very useful. So I'm going to take that out. It was kind of just a proof of concept. And I want to get rid of that line at the end. So yeah, I don't need a snapshot of my memory. That's not really helpful. So you can see in here, it's just some information that pops up on the screen. Just a bunch of echoes and text, you know, simple stuff. Let's save it and then we'll open a new tab. So it looks better. Okay. Tells you my CPU, my GPU uptime, shows you my kernel version. So yeah, some useful information. Welcome back pilot. I got this ASCII X-Wing from online. So now we're going to get a little bit more advanced here. So let me show you my X-Wing script. Now this is just a script that runs and um, refreshes every so often. It refreshes every 10 seconds, I believe. So the idea with this script was to give flight information. So information that would be useful to a pilot. So, um, so what I did was I pulled information from the kind of local airport or the, the airport on this side of North Carolina, which is RDU. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the like weather information from Raleigh. I'm getting some more information here. I'm getting like aviation data here. So if you go, so this is what it actually shows. So I pulled some of this information and kind of translated it into something I could read because I, I, I'm not a pilot. I don't know what any of this means. I'm gonna show some cool fake stuff like shields, weapons, targeting, that kind of stuff. A little bit of, you know, fantasy. Um, and then we have, just a bunch more information. It's just gonna be pulling some information from the machine, uh, uptime, uh, temperatures, things like that. It's gonna be doing like graphs and stuff. And then every 10 seconds, it's going to um, refresh. So 
let me run it here. All right, so we have our X-Wing ASCII up here. We have our shields, our weapons, our targeting. We have the weather in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have the wind. We have the visibility. Um, we have scattered cloud or you know, scattered clouds, overcast. Um, we have dew point. <laughs> um, and then I have uptime, CPU temperature, um, RAM, disk, all that good stuff. So that just kind of refreshes every 10 seconds or so. And uh, that was one of the first ones I did. That was when I, I kind of got the X-Wing idea. This one I like the most because this was kind of a crazy idea. I didn't think I would be able to execute. This one is called Imperial Watch. So the idea behind this is that since I'm a rebel X-Wing pilot, I need to know what the what the Imperials are up to. Are up to. So I wanted to take it a little bit further than that, not just have fake information on the screen, which is basically what it is, just a bunch of fake information that rotates. Um, but I also wanted to add some sort of real context to it, kind of like I did the other script, where it's actually showing real weather and real uh, flight information. So what I did with this one is that I have some text files that it's going to pull from. This is kind of this is more of the, the fake sci fi stuff. So you can see here I took I have these text files. So I have a list of species of like a bunch of species from Star Wars. And then I have what 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 crimes are going on. And the real part of it, I already lost the script, where did it go? So the real part of this that's cool is I am pulling, what, what part of the script is this? Oh my God, I scrolled up. Okay, it's up here, <laughs> I'm tripping. Okay, so stream URL. So this is using, so this is a real police scanner for, um, for Raleigh as well. So if I put this URL in a address bar, it pulls this up. And this is a live police scanning. So what the script looks like is this. So you can see here, we have these randomly generated, you know, police scanner chatter going on. So it's a unknown Jawa transmitting interference pulse at main lift corridor, alert level raised. So it's basically pulling from those text files. It's pulling a gender, it's pulling a, a species, it's pulling an action, and then it's pulling a note. And it's just doing that at random. It's just pulling a random one from every um, every text file that was in there. The volume, okay, there. I can turn the volume up with nine and zero. So if I turn the volume up, but I still have to play it though. It's muted right now. I think it's control M to mute. Yes, okay. Vader incident, 1200 Broad Street. Okay, I'll go ahead and mute that now. So you just do control M and it mutes it. So the arcade machine is the next task. I just installed Nobara OS on it. Give me some ideas on what I should do with the arcade machine. It doesn't have to be Star Wars related. It can kind of be its own thing. And before you head out, check out this video I made when I actually did the full conversion to a full-time Linux user. And let me know what you think. Peace.